Yeah, Tom Izzo is obviously the face of Michigan State basketball, and some might even say he's the face of the entire university. Two days after last year's shooting, he had the honor of speaking at the vigil, and while his words were extremely powerful, Izzo was a bit nervous beforehand. When you think back to what happened last year on February 13th, what was maybe the biggest takeaway or something that you think will always stick with you about that day? Well, when people say that uh, live each day like it's your last, that was my takeaway. You know, you, uh, about as safe as surrounding and everything that you could have, and boom, just like that, something happens. And uh, it was uh, that just the sadness of what happened for, for no reason. That, that's, that's the difference. To the families of those who were senselessly taken from us, words seem so hollow right now. You obviously were a big voice in terms of the MSU community speaking at the vigil um, a few days afterwards. You said you, in your press conference this week you were nervous when you went up there. It didn't seem like it when you were listening back to it, but why do you feel like the nerves started to kick in for you at that time? Well, you get to do a lot of things in these jobs and speak in front of, you know, I've been to the White House, I've been to different places. and But uh, I expected a student a decent sized student body to be there and when I saw the number of people there and the number of people both from the community the student side from different ages to different uh, c colors to everything that was there that night it, uh, it made me realize that uh, boy we need to bring everybody together and that's not easy to do and uh, I just felt like uh, man, am I saying the right stuff, you know? Am I thinking about the right things? And, and I always hate, I hate it, when I have to speak about something and it hasn't happened to me directly. Because I never think you'd give enough understanding to people. You know, I'm talking to them and I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out a way to be a rah-rah guy and, you know, we've got to move on, we've got to help this. And then I think of my own kids and if, uh, you know, uh, if my kid was one of the three that uh, didn't make it, or if mine was one of the four or five that are going to have to live with the problems through the rest of their life, I think you'd feel differently. So I always, I always get nervous when I have to talk about something that I haven't gone through myself because it, it's like I don't have a right to. But at the same time, I wanted the message to say, you know, let's try to hang together and be together and and don't make a crisis the only time we do it. A couple weeks ago, John, one of the guys that has been paralyzed a little bit, was in the locker room with his uh, in his wheelchair and he just made me realize how lucky I am and he made me realize how I shouldn't complain and do the things. He was an unbelievable kid, unbelievable. And he's coming back to school. He's still in rehab over in Chicago. I mean, that was an incredible um, evening.